Okay. Well, welcome to MS Rise Virtual Seminar. Uh, before I introduce Jay, our speaker today, I'll just go over a few things, standard things. Uh, the default is that the seminar takes place Mondays through Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, but definitely um, keep your eye on the schedule because those times might change. Um, your understanding is um, always and continues to be appreciated uh, for technical difficulties and knowing that um, for many people, this is the first time they've given a talk through this format. Um, there's a few more seminar slots still open before MSRI's term is over in the end of May. Um, and consider uh, sending me, Chris Douglas, or Noah Snyder nominations for filling those slots. Those nominations can include yourself. Um, the seminar slot is for 90 minutes. Hopefully that gives plenty of time to interrupt Jay with, with questions or uh, spark up discussions. Um, so definitely feel free to pipe up. When you do so, um, uh, state your, your name. That way it gives Jay and the rest of us a little bit more context to speak from. Uh, and on that point, you're invited to keep your video on just for that little bit of extra feedback for Jay and the rest of us. Um, uh, you're also invited to join the tea room after Jay's talk for some more informal discussion. And uh, right when when Jay starts starts speaking, I'll send a, a link to the to the spreadsheet with those uh, uh, the seminar um, schedule. All right. Well, uh, it's um, it's great to have Jay speak in our our seminar today. Um, on two categorical aspects of equivariant stable homotopy theory. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, and thank you for the invitation to speak, yeah. So I will be uh, writing from my iPad, so I'll disable my video feed. So you all should be able to see um, the notability, and I will first give an overview of my talk. So let's let G be a finite group, and let's let SPG denote the infinity category of genuine G spectra. I'll go over this in a moment if you haven't seen this before. An overview. Uh, so first I want to state the theorem of uh, Saul Glassman and uh, David Ayala, Aaron Maisel G and Nick Rosenblum, which gives a certain presentation of genuine G spectra in terms of the infinity categories of Borel uh, bile group equivariant spectra. So this is this thing I've highlighted as a sort of the macrocosm. I'll explain what that means, but in particular, from this description of that infinity category, so involving along with these infinity categories of spectral vowel group action, certain generalized uh, tate Minogri functors thereof, you can extract a description of a G spectrum X, which in effect reconstructs it from its spectra of geometric fixed points together with Tate gluing data. As an application of this reconstruction result, I'll next give a, another proof, which is um, conceptually slightly different, uh, though of course, in the end, it's somewhat similar, uh, of the theorem of Nichols and Schultze, which gives a simplified description of piece cyclotomic spectra uh, in terms of just a spectrum with uh, CP infinity action together with a uh, certain Frobenius snap under the bounded below hypothesis. It's quite simple given this reconstruction theorem to prove the theorem of Nichols and Schultze. So that's the major application of this result. Finally, I'd like to sketch a proof of the reconstruction theorem, which is um, a variation of that uh, given by um, AMGR, so the group of free offers above. This is, uh, I think, a variation uh, because it's really based on a more general result, namely an existence theorem for the pointwise lax right con extension. That's four diagrams in cat infinity, which are indexed by um, posets corresponding to locally co Cartesian vibrations over a poset P. That's, and that's along a functor pi from P to delta one. So, in other words, a sieve coset decomposition of P. This work will be, uh, this work that I'm describing um, on this existence theorem is joint with J.D. Quigley and our application is, is also joint. So we actually 
in this work I'm alluding to give a new description of real peace cyclotomic spectra. So that was our point of departure and how I got interested in these results. But without further ado, let's uh, begin. So let's recall that um, we have SPG, the homotopy theory of G spaces that's given as a pre-sheath infinity category P of OG, where OG is the orbit category of G. That is the full subcategory of G sets on G sets of the form G mod H, where H ranges over the subgroups of G. So this is Elmendorf's theorem. And in particular, you have a jointly conservative collection of fixed point functors which go from G spaces to what I can call, uh, what I will call Borel uh, Vaal group equivariant spaces. So I'll denote this um, by SBC upper H W G H. You can think in fact, that this presentation identifying G spaces as pre sheaves on OG globalizes the collection of fixed point functors because, of course, given a presentation of G spaces as a pre sheaf category on the orbit category OG, it's manifest that evaluation at the objects in OG would yield a jointly conservative collection. It's a uh, put another way, a parameterization of G spaces in terms of fixed point data. Now uh, I want to stabilize, but I want to stabilize in the genuine sense. So I want to invert all the real representation spheres, SV, where V ranges over the real uh, finite dimensional G reps. and thereby obtain the infinity category of genuine G spectra, along with uh, the sigma infinity plus loops infinity adjunction. So note that even though I have a pre sheet category uh, to begin with, after performing this genuine stabilization, I fail to have a pre-sheaf category. So this is not spectral pre-sheaves on the orbit category OG because I've inverted more than um, just the representation spheres for the trivial uh, representation. So correspondingly, you get two different fixed points. Depending on what sort of uh, functoriality you have, which intertwines with the unstable fixed point functors. So on the one hand, you have the categorical fixed points, which I'll denote upper psi H. So these are functors from G spectra to Borel, Bio group equivariant spectra, where H is a subgroup of G again. And these functors cover the unstable fixed point functors through loops infinity. So I have commutative diagrams like so. And uh, again, just recall this uh, 
my notation for Wagner equivariant spectra just means that I have spectra of Wagner action. And just like with the unstable fixed point functors, I have a jointly conservative collection. This globalizes to the presentation of G spectra in terms of spectral Mackey functors. So these are product preserving functors from the span category of finite G sets to spectra. So the cross indicates that it's product preserving. And uh, the span category is taken uh, in FG, so that's uh, again finite G sets. Um, sorry, there seems to be an issue with my uh, scrolling. So let me see if I can figure that out. Uh, just be momentarily. No problem. Okay. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure what the problem is, but. Okay. okay. So this presentation is uh, useful in uh, a number of ways. So this makes plain the uh, significance of transfers in the theory. The transfers, which are encoded by looking at um, the wrong way maps in the span category, or maybe the covariant maps, are precisely the additional morphisms I need for a G spectrum to, uh, well, to be a G spectrum as opposed to a naive G spectrum, i.e. a spectral creation. This parameterization in terms of categorical fixed points is also highly adapted to the study of equivariant K theory. However, uh, as if you ever thought about the Galois descent problem in equivariant K theory, it would be, it's clear that um, one deficit of these categorical fixed point functors is that they are difficult to compute. And indeed, if I look at the sort of intertwining that I have with unstable fixed point functors, this is because they intertwine with the loops infinity functors as opposed to the infinite suspension, more or less. Well, that's one way to view this. So I'll from now on, completely forget about the categorical fixed point functors and instead think about the other way of sort of stabilizing the unstable fixed point functors, which will yield the so-called geometric fixed point functors. So I'll denote this by upper phi h. Again, this is a, these are functors which go from G spectra to Vagroup, Borel Vagroup equivariant spectra. And they lift, the sigma infinity plus functors. I, did, I should say they lift the unstable fixed point functors through sigma infinity plus. And once more, we have a jointly conservative collection And the question we have to ask ourselves is, what is the globalization, i.e. parameterization in terms of geometric fixed point data? And that's what the reconstruction theorem of Saul Glassman first and then um, AMGR answers. It answers this question. So as a warm up, 
we can, uh, well, I'd like to go through the case of uh, CP, so a cyclic group of prime order, in which case a lot of the theory simplifies drastically. So first, let me express the uh, category of G spaces in terms of so-called recallment. So this notion of recallment is the fundamental concept which undergirds everything I'm talking about. So let's recall, if you are maybe, if you have never seen this notion, introduce the idea of recallment. So let's let C be an infinity category with finite limits. And let's let U and Z be full subcategories. Again, with finite limits. So U and Z exhibit um, a recallment if following conditions obtain. So um, let me denote the inclusions by J lower star and I lower star. First, um, J lower star and I lower star admit left exact left adjoints. J upper star and I upper star. Second, these left exact left adjoints are jointly conservative. And third, uh, there's a, a way in which the symmetry is broken in this situation, namely that J upper star, I lower star is a constant functor at the terminal object of U. So in this situation, we can reconstruct C from the data, of course, of U and Z, but together with a functor, which we call the gluing functor between them, which is the functor I upper star, J lower star. This is a left exact functor. I mean uh, that we can reconstruct in a very precise sense, namely that if I look at the functor from C to the directed fiber product, uh, of this gluing functor, that's simply U uh, fiber product with the arrow category of Z over Z, where uh, arrow category projects to Z via evaluation at the target. Then uh, this is an equivalence in this situation, in the Rickleman situation. So here, the functor sends X to J upper star X and I upper star X going to I upper star, J lower star, J upper star. So that involves the unit, of course, of the adjunction. And uh, the reconstruction in the other way amounts to, well, let me just say, it amounts to the following fracture squared decomposition of objects at C. Namely that I have uh, a pullback diagram. If I look at the units of the two adjunctions and then combine them. So recallments arise in a variety of contexts, but in this unstable context, I think the simplest way to um, exhibit or give an example of recallments is via correspondence. So let's suppose that we have a correspondence, namely infinity category M together with a functor to delta one. Let me denote the fibers by, of course, um, M0 and M1, then I get a recallment. I look at co pre sheaves on M in terms of co pre sheaves on M1 and co pre sheaves on M0, where um, the 
I'm giving you the adjunctions, uh, sorry, J upper star and I upper star are simply restriction. And the right adjoints are, of course, given by a right chi extension. And it's easy to check that this indeed gives a Rickleman. Joint conservativity, for instance, is obvious. The only thing which, um, well, where you see the symmetry being broken is, of course, computing that J upper star, I lower star is your, or is constant at the terminal option. So in the case where M is, um, so as some intuition, in the case where M is maybe the exit path category of a stratified space X over delta one, this uh, copre sheaves gives you constructible sheaves on X with respect to the stratification. And with regard to the Alexandra topology on the post at delta one, the point one is open and the point zero is closed. Cosives are open in the Alexandra topology. So here I get locally constant sheaves on, um, let's say U is the open determined by the stratification on uh, X. And uh, the closed complement is locally constant sheaves on Z. In particular, um, I will often regard the uh, embedding given by J lower star as the open piece of the recallment and the embedding given by I lower star as the closed piece of the recallment. This allows you to import intuition from topology into category theory. The correspondence I want to be thinking of in the CP example is uh, the one given by projecting to the opposite of the opposite of the post set of subgroups. So in this case, the fiber over CP is a point, and the fiber over E, the, the identity, is BCP. So this yields a recallment on uh, CP spaces, where the open piece is Borel CP spaces, and the closed piece is uh, spaces. Indeed, if you think about what this J lower star functor is doing, it's sending a space of CP action, which I'll denote like this, X with uh, CP action, to the pre-sheaf, where I look at the CP fixed points of X mapping to X. And this yields a in particular a decomposition or a, a presentation of CP spaces as this fiber product. So the idea is to stabilize this in the genuine sense. So how can I uh, transport this recallment to uh, a recallment on CP spectra? Well, in the situation of uh, stable recallments, the definition I gave actually uh, is determined by a simpler data. And here I should be uh, maybe a bit more specific. I really want to be thinking about stable monoidal recallments, in other words, where the left adjoints um, are symmetric monoidal, AKA the full subcategories uh, admit a symmetric monoidal structure induced by the one on the, uh, the larger category. So let me draw the recallment diagram again. The diagram of the junctions. So here I'm now supposing C is stable and, and U and Z are stable. In the stable setting, I first of all have extra adjoints. I have a left adjoint to J upper star and a right adjoint, I upper shriek to I lower star. In particular, uh, Z you see is both uh, localizing and co-localizing. But in this monoidal situation, you can do a bit better. 
z is actually modules over i lower star of the unit in z. And since i lower star is supposed to be fully faithful, you know that this is actually a idempotent infinity algebra. So the slogan is that idempotent infinity algebra is determining smashing localizations and smashing localizations of either taking left and right orthogonal complements will determine the data of a stable monoidal requirement. So I want to somehow get an idempotent infinity algebra which will determine my recallment on CP spectra. Now, to do this and to know that it's going to be in some sense compatible with what I have unstably, I can note that, okay, um, once I point the unstable recallment on CP spaces, so I'm just going to point that category, then uh, I can, I, I, have a, I have the same sort of picture with an idempotent infinity algebra, uh, even unstably in the point and setting. And where is that coming from? Well, I can look at this universal space EC, ECP plus going to S0 and take its cofiber, which gets me the CP space EC, ECP twiddle, which is quite familiar to anyone who's ever worked in equivariant stable home to be theory. So this again is the, if I think about the CP, uh, the pre-sheaf on the orbit category of CP, this is just the unit sphere mapping to a point with trivial CP action. So this is exhibiting ECP, excuse me, twiddle as an idempotent object with respect to smash product on pointed CP spaces. And that, of course, uh, uniquely determines the infinity structure on eigenpoint infinity algebra. By eigenpoint object, I mean that um, you have that then do map from ECP twiddle to ECP twiddle smash ECP twiddles and equivalents. So I have my eigenpoint infinity algebra. And of course, we know that sigma infinity from pointed CP spaces to CP spectra is strong symmetric monoidal. So that immediately determines the, the stable monoidal recallment that I'm looking for. So. And again, I please uh, excuse my uh, these technical issues, but I have to figure out how to figure, uh, fix the scrolling problem. No problem, Jay. Yeah. I request you write like 15, 20% bigger. Uh, sure. Yeah. The so, line is really wide, which makes them hard to read. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 should I constrain the, uh, my writing to be more in the middle also? Uh, no, that's fine. It's okay. visible. It's just, just really tiny. <laughs> oh, sure. I find it anyway. Maybe others differ, but yeah. One idea okay. is to thicken the pen. The pen sure. Ah, yeah, that's, so, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I should have uh, resolved these technical issues because notability is now frozen. No, 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 don't apologize. It's fine. It's great. I just, yeah, it just makes it, it'll make it. Okay. Different. Uh, occasionally, occasionally this, this software will freeze, so we'll have to bear with it, I suppose. But yes, I, I will uh, enlarge this. Thanks. So what is this recallment? Uh, is this fine, by the way? Or should I write larger? Maybe the thickening of the pen is not, not really the point. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Much visible. Yeah. So the compatibility with suspension immediately implies that if I take CP spectra and I look at this, these modules over this um, ECP twiddle, by which I mean sigma infinity, but um, I will suppress the sigma infinity. 
in CP spectra. Then, under the identification of this with spectra, you have that this uh, I upper star functor is actually given by the CP geometric fixed points from before. So, I mean, that was defined essentially to be the prolongation of the unstable CP fixed points by a symmetric monoidal left adjoint. So this is not surprising, but you maybe have to say something to actually identify this for the left adjoint of the closed subcategory of the stable recoilment. Nonetheless, it is true. Whereas the J upper star functor in this situation is the geometric fixed points with respect to the trivial subgroup. So again, uh, you have to identify that open piece now as just the ordinary stabilization of uh, Borel CP, um, CP spaces. And that's more or less because once I've cut out all of the non-trivial um, morphisms in the orbit category, so I'm, my, I'm looking at sort of a stratified picture. My strata is now infinity group or BCP. Taking its genuine stabilization doesn't do anything as opposed to its ordinary stabilization. I'm just taking the stabilization. So this yields the, the stable recoilment in question. So now I want to look at the gluing functor. So that's I upper star, J lower star. And that's, in this case, not the homotopy fixed points as it was unstably, but the CP take construction. So let's uh, just recall briefly, what is this Tate construction? Well, it's a uh, spectral version of taking Tate cohomology. So I have the homotopy orbits, the homotopy fixed points, and the norm map. So this is very familiar uh, probably to any, uh, everyone here, but it's in particular has been talked about in Tomer's talk on ambidexterity uh, a few weeks ago. So I have this additive norm map, which is a spectral refinement of the thing which takes an orbit, a CP orbit, and sums over the conjugates. And I can take its cofiber and get the CP take construction. And it's sort of miraculous that if you think about what we're doing here, I said that given the recoilment, I can reconstruct the category in the middle from the two pieces together with the gluing functor. And this is telling me once I identify the gluing functor that I'm reconstructing CP spectra in terms of Borel CP spectra, spectra, and uh, Tate monodromy. So objects here are again uh, spectra of CP action, just a spectrum and a map to the Tate of the spectrum I have. So that's the prototype of the reconstruction theorem that I'm going to try stating, which was worked out by Glassman and uh, Ayala, Maisel, Jane, Rosenblum. But let me just briefly remark that, uh, so why is this useful? I, I should give uh, maybe a quick application. Well, maybe one thing to note is that um, the gluing functor is actually a uh, lax symmetric monoidal. And in the situation of this monoidal recoilment, this will reconstruct the symmetric monoidal structure on uh, the glued category. Well, once I identify this with the Tate construction, this also constructs, so this shows that this is a lax symmetric monoidal functor and in particular sends commutative algebras to commutative algebras. So it's not so obvious to give a constructive sort of definition of the lax symmetric monoidal structure on the CPTA construction if you don't, in other words, pass through genuine CP spectrum. Another application, which is perhaps more profound, is to construct the Tate diagonal. and thus the Frobenius. 
which is a fundamental, of course, uh, operation, which we want in higher algebra also. So this is via the Hill-Hopkins-Ravenel norm, which plays very nicely with the geometric fixed points parameterization. And this sends x in this parameterization to the p-fold tensor power of x together with, uh, well, the gluing functor, which is going to be this tape diagonal. Other approaches I know are, which don't somehow pass for the HHR norm in this category of genuine CP spectra, uh, are not constructive in nature. They uh, rely on a, well, a universal property, which is also good to have, but this gives you construction. So I think that's enough uh, regarding CP spectra. I hope the, the point is clear that um, we have uh, solved the question in the case where G is CP. So let's pass to the general case where by general, I am still in the generality of G affinity group. So let's let P be the subconjugacy poset of G. In other words, the objects are um, subgroups, but the maps are, um, you have an order, uh, you have H less than equal to K, if and only if H is subconjugate to K. So just, uh, I'll just say this out loud. This really defines a pre-ordered set and it's post-set homotopically, or you could pass conscious classes of subgroups of G, depending on what you prefer. So the first order uh, business is to explain how to more generally get uh, recallments from sieves in P. So a sieve um, F in P, that is to say, if you uh, don't know this terminology, a downward closed subpost set is what is usually called uh, a family in this uh, setting. Um, this determines a functor, uh, that is to say a map of posets from P to delta one, whose fiber over zero is F. And conversely, uh, such functors are clearly in bijective correspondence of SIVs. In particular, I get um, OF, uh, looking at orbits with type constrained to line F, or stabilizer, maybe it's better to say, and it's a uh, complement OFC. If I look at the complementary cosiv. So in other words, um, I'm looking at the composite functor from OG to delta one as my correspondence. We had correspondences yielding recallments. Unstably, this yields recallment on yields a recallment as before on G spaces. And let me just introduce some notation for these pre-sheaf categories. This will be, the left, the open will be denoted by SBC upper HF, and the closed will be denoted by SBC upper uh, BF. So if I point, I again have the idempotent object, S0 to EF twiddle, where E of twiddle, uh, that's a G space such that the K fixed points are S zero when K is not in F and a point when K is in F and uh, taking sigma infinity again yields a recallment SP upper HF and SP upper phi F lying inside SPG. So let me just parenthetically just remark that let's say F is just a trivial family, then SP upper HF embedded inside SPG is sometimes denoted as um, called co-free G spectra and is equivalent 
to just Borel G spectra in the sense of spectral G action. And if N is a normal subgroup in G, then I can take the, uh, the cosiv uh, uh, generated by N. So I'll denote FC by the cosiv. Then the complementary sieve F, if I consider this localization, the smashing localization given my modules over EF twiddle is equivalent to just uh, G mod N spectra. So this is some stable requirements. Um, if I let the fiber be EF plus, let me just uh, also say that if I let that fiber be EF plus in G spectra, or I could just you know take the cofiber unstably, then um, this J lower star embeds as so-called F complete objects. That's say G spectra X, which are equivalent to looking at the internal hum in G spectra from EF plus into X. This is a computes uh, the co unit, the excuse me unit, and I lower star embeds as those x such that x is equivalent to x uh, smash ef twiddle. So these are sometimes called f inverse local. And this is just to make a connection with um, some of the theory of or the literature of equivariant stable homotopy theory, which some people here might be more familiar with. In particular, I learned this terminology from uh, a paper of Matthew Nauman in the web. So with that said, um, because the subconsciously posted is not simply delta one in the general case, it's not sufficient to obtain uh, a reconstruction result from geometric fixed points uh, to think about just sieve cosiv decompositions of the subconsciously posted. The next thing to do is to understand the, the sort of strata in this picture. Um, where uh, I have stripped out the transfers. Namely, I want to take um, Borel spectra, which are equivariant respect to the action of the vial group of some subgroup H and G, and figure out how this embeds in G spectra. So that will be right adjoint to this H geometric fixed points functor. What is this embedding along the lines of maybe what you saw in the CP case? Well, if I think about taking the post set, let's say this is a cartoon of the post set P and this H inside it, I can look at the family generated by that post set. And then I can sort of cut out H as uh, the complement of, well, the family generated by H where I've removed H. So I have F less than equal to H be the sieve generated by H and F less than H as uh, this F less than equal to H minus H. And I'm sort of, these should be interpreted in the obvious way, namely I take also subgroups conscious to H if I was thinking about P as being a pre-ordered set, for instance. So that's, that's always implicit in what I'm saying. With these two families, I can think about this embedding as somehow being uh, locally closed. Namely, um, well, let me just say in generality, if I first, if I have G as a subfamily, Then I can think about first F complete G spectra as being open inside G spectra. And also um, I have G inverse local spectra as being closed, but I can take the intersection thereof of these two conditions 
And this again will be closed inside um, F complete spectra. And this deserves to be thought of as locally closed. So I can, by intersecting these families, sort of, I'm really intersecting the sieve F and the cosiv complementary to G in this case. I can obtain the uh, locally closed full subcategories of G spectrum. So in this case, you get um, SBHF intersect, so that's less than equal to H, SB phi F less than H. And the idea here is that um, if I'm F complete and G inverse local, I'm concentrated on uh, the part of the post set where my subgroups are in F minus G. So in this case, I will be concentrated on just H. So this will be equivalent to Vagu equivariant spectra. And uh, this, of course, embeds, as I said, in a, as a full subcategory of G spectra, as a locally closed full subcategory. Next, so um, we've understood the strata. What about the monogery? So I want to obtain the now so-called generalized tape monogamy. So for H uh, subconjugate to K, I will get, well, I, I do get a non-trivial functor which I'll denote as tau upper k lower h from WGH uh, Borel equivariant spectra to WGK Borel equivariant via taking this fully faithful embedding as just described and then taking h, uh, sorry, k geometric fixed points. So that's a definition of, of this functor. This recovers, for instance, in the CP case, the, the CP tape construction. But Let's note that, um, let's say, uh, in general, this is not Tate. For instance, if uh, G is CP squared, tau of CP squared uh, comma E, or one, is equivalent to taking the homotopy CP fixed points and then taking the Tate uh, with regard to the residual action, which is not, of course, the CP squared T, but re does receive a map from. This is so tau G E is sometimes called the proper K construction, but this, is, this uh, as written, is, operates in even more generality because it, you're considering a pair of subgroups. Now we, uh, observe that if you think about the functoriality uh, that these generalized Tate monogamy functors enjoy, that uh, sort of a lax, uh, this is where lax category theory appears, uh, lax category theory is, is present in the following sense. Namely, if I think about, for instance, uh, a string of sub subgroups, then if I look at H1 to H3, there's a natural map to H3, H2, compose H2, H1, and this need not be an equivalence, not generally an equivalence. So it's this uh, sort of fundamental property of this, of the generalized Tate monogamy, which complicates uh, sort of any approach to the stating even the reconstruction theorem of Saul Glassman and uh, David, uh, Aaron and Nick, without sort of grappling with, well, infinity two category theory in some sense. So that's where, <laughs> Uh, the infinity two category theory intervenes.
However, we have a very efficient means of encoding such lax functionality uh, using the technology of locally co-cartesian vibrations. So let's just recall um, how straining, unstraining works in the context of locally co-cartesian vibrations. So I'm just going to, again, work with the base being a post set, but it can be an arbitrary infinity category. And locally co-cartesian vibrations, C over P, under the straining, unstraining correspondence proven uh, first by Lurie, or maybe only by Lurie, uh, well, they correspond to two functors from this C fract of P to cat infinity. So C fract is the, the usual left adjoint to the homotopy coherent nerve from simplicial categories uh, to quasi categories. For instance, if uh, P is delta two, then I'm saying uh, that locally co Cartesian vibrations over delta two correspond to the following picture. So I have C0, C1, and C2 as the fibers. I have the monodromy, but then I have a natural transformation from the tau two zero to the composition of tau two one and tau uh, one zero. Well, that's just encoded in C frac delta two by the string inclusion from zero two to zero one two. And uh, every notion or concept of lax category theory, which I'll be discussing in this talk, uh, is really a uh, can be stated in terms of locally co-Cartesian vibrations. So you need not think about this straining unstraining correspondence. You can just think about the locally co-Cartesian vibrations for everything we're doing. Now I can state the main definition of Ayala, Maisel, G, and Rosenblum. And I'm just going to maybe rename the concept along the lines of my work with JD. So the geometric locus, uh, SBG sub P locus, inside SBG cross P is the full subcategory on objects X comma H, where X is again uh, in this embedding of Wagubek covariant spectra into G spectra. So again, this intersection And um, the basic proposition is, of course, that if I look at the projection of the geometric locus to P, this is a locally co-Cartesian vibration uh, with uh, the monodromy given by the tau KHs as above. So this is, of course, formal. So I'm on my point, my fifth point, and I can finally state uh, the reconstruction here. So um, to do this, I need to introduce the barycentric subdivision, of course, or let me just call that subdivision. So the subdivision of a post set P is uh, the post set SD of P um, whose objects are strings in P, that is to say um, chains X0, X1 up to Xn, where these uh, relations are strict, and whose uh, relation is given by string inclusion. For instance, if I look at SV delta two, then that's given by one, zero, zero one, one, zero one two, one two, two, and zero two. Now um, SDP, admits a map to P, which takes the maximum of a string. And this is a locally 
uh, co-Cartesian fibration. Under the straining unstraining correspondence, it corresponds to the well, the functor out of C frac, which takes the 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 slice in the two categorical sense. But we're thinking about the locally co-Cartesian fibration in this context, and just like somehow the the twisted error category, i.e., the edgewise subdivision is fundamental in one category theory. The, the subdivision is fundamental in two categories. So, given a locally co Cartesian fibration, C over P, let me uh, define uh, the right lax limit of it. Is so that's going to be the category of functors from SDP to C over P, which preserve locally co-Cartesian edges. So let me just remark uh, in words, or out loud, I should say, uh, that this terminology of right lax is meant to contrast with um, thinking of locally co-Cartesian vibration as a left lax uh, diagram. Left corresponds to co-Cartesian always, and, and right Cartesian. So if you want uh, another way to think about this, well, um, the reason that you should think about this as really def being an uh, adequate definition of a right lax limit is that um, given the appropriate uh, infinity two categorical foundations, this corresponds to a right lax morphisms over P out of the base. So left lax morphisms of left lax diagrams are encoded somehow by looking at maps of locally co-Cartesian vibrations, which do not preserve co-Cartesian edges. But it's not so simple to encode the notion of a right lax map of, of locally co-Cartesian vibrations. Nonetheless, if I'm thinking about the base, I can just uh, replace the base with a subdivision and look at uh, maps which preserve co-Cartesian edges. So now I can finally state the theorem. And I'm really giving the formulation in terms of what uh, AMGR did. So if I take the right lax limit over P of the geometric locus, i.e., again, let me just write out fun cocart over P uh, SDP into SPG P locus, then there is uh, a natural functor. I, I should say I'm going to define a functor out of that to G spectra, which takes um, a, such a diagram and takes the limit after post-composition into G spectra. And uh, this is an equivalence. So this is equivalence. So um, maybe I should ask at this point, are there any questions about the formulation of the main theorem? Okay, if not, uh, I will give some examples. So let's return, let's just check that we recover the CP example. So I'm um, sorry, G is CP. So in this case, uh, of course, I'm looking at the subdivision of delta one and I'm claiming to reconstruct G in terms of the following sorts of diagrams. So I have zero, zero, one, one, and such a diagram is sent to, first of all, XE. This is in Borel CP spectra. So this zero to zero one, that's a co-Cartesian edge because the, I should have said the co-Cartesian, well, the monodromy encoded by the max functor is given by concatenation at the end. So that's sent to uh, taking well, XE, uh, mapping to the CP tape on XE. Let me just mark the co-cartesian edges. And um, X1, sorry, one is sent to a, a spectrum, X uh, upper phi CP. 
So this is a presentation of a CP spectrum. And, and really um, looking at a right lax limit over delta one is form, forming that fiber product that um, reconstructed the category decomposed by Recolman from before. So this, this specializes to the Recolman theory in the case where G is CP. For G is CP squared, um, let me just give that example. So this in the geometric locus is sent to the following sort of thing. Uh, let me just write that out. I have x upper e, which is acted on by cp squared. I can take um, the generalized Tate monogamy in the case where I'm just jumping by one. I'm really taking cp Tate with the residual cp action. I have a map from x upper phi cp. And again, uh, I push, continue to push forward. I take x upper phi cp. TCP, again, that's just the ordinary tape. Um, e iterated tape. I have a map from XPCP squared. And this long arrow here is the interesting arrow in this case. That sends uh, XE to X tau CP squared, which was X upper HCP TCP. And um, we have the following data, therefore. So let me just highlight that. I have a map alpha, a map beta, a map gamma, and a homotopy sigma, apart from the objects. So that, that's the data in this presentation of a CP squared spectrum. Okay, so let me go to my application now. I have about 30 minutes remaining. So let me, um, give another proof of the theorem of Nikolaus Schulze on a P cyclotomic spectra in the bounded below setting. So um, let me state the theorem first. Let's let CP infinity be the inverse limit along the restriction functors of, uh, sorry, the infinity categories of CPN spectra. So this is, of course, the, I mean, the obvious notion of what it means to think about, it. think about looking at this, you know, proof or P group and equivariant spectra with respect to it. So we have the geometric fixed point functors from CPN spectra to CPN mod CP, i.e. Uh, CP n minus one spectra. I denote this by uppercase V because I want to distinguish this from the functor which will just land in the Borel equivariant spectra. So, a lot, so this is compatible with restriction. So it lifts to an endofunctor, VCP on CP infinity spectra. So let me define following uh, sort of the classical approach the category of genuine p cyclotomic spectra as the equalizer with respect to the identity and VCP on this category. So I'm just, uh, I adopt this notation because I'm considering an equalizer of two endofunctors on the category. It's just a compact notation to express that. In other words, I have objects X in CP infinity spectra together with uh, data of equivalence between X and PCPX. Um, now, uh, the Nicholas Schulze approach is 
different. So instead, I will define the category of p cyclotomic spectra to be the lax equalizer of now I give a direction because it's a lax equalizer of identity. Let me put a colon again. TCP, but the, it's a direction implicit in that. On um, Borel equivariant CP infinity spectra. So a priori, you expect this to be a um, sort of a truckload of less data than genuine p-cyclotomic spectra. So objects here are given by x with a CP infinity action, together with a so-called Frobenius map from x to the CP tail on x. Here, I'm implicitly to write CP as a CP t as an endofunctor. I'm implicitly identifying CP infinity mod CP via CP infinity um, via the PF power map. I suppose I was already doing that when I was writing the endofunctor PCP above after uh, taking the inverse limit along restrictions. So I should have said that. The theorem of Nicholas Schultz, I then is that there's a forgetful functor um, u from genuine p-cyclotomic spectra to cyclotomic spectra, which is an equivalence uh, on bounded below. Some people like to call us eventually connected objects. And the idea of the proof is to realize the geometric fixed point functor as a shift endo functor with respect to uh, this uh, this theorem, this reconstruction theorem, and to simplify uh, at finite level. The category of CPN spectra in the bound below case or on bound below objects. So um, there's a, a formal step which is sort of passing to infinity. I want to maybe just indicate how uh, the simplification of finite level works and uh, leave the details to maybe the, the reference, which is my paper of JD on this. So there's a, ab I, I want to maybe highlight the abstract results. So there's an abstract uh, simplification result. for uh, right lax limits of locally co-cartesian vibrations uh, excuse my handwriting over delta n so the idea is to look at objects sd delta n to c which are determined by the, their restriction to the spine S D lower one delta N. Um, that's uh, by which I mean, I just look at strings uh, where the I have two objects and they're adjacent. So let me just draw it, for instance. So this is what I think of as the spine of the subdivision of delta n. So let me um, say that if you look at the restriction, of this right lax limit, of objects in this right lax limit to the spine, that 
that this thing, um, if you unwind the definition, which will, this, this will decompose as an iterated fiber product. If you think about the description of CP squared spectra, for instance, that I gave above, there was this data of maps alpha, beta, but also the data of this gamma together with a homotopy sigma, which involved the string zero two. If I strip out that string, then I can really consider, uh, well, if I was able to just disregard that string, I would be able to regard CP squared spectra as an iterated fiber product. So you can't exactly do that, but you uh, can in a certain sense, which I'll uh, explain now. So just think that we don't have this CP squared Tate. Uh, the CP squared generalized Tate is equivalent to the iterated Tate, which would allow us to disregard that string zero two, but the crucial lemma of Nicholas and Schulze, namely the Tate orbit lemma, shows that this is an equivalence uh, on a bounded below objects. The fiber, in other words, uh, which is taking the homotopy orbits and then the Tate vanishes. But I, I want to um, not dilate upon the meaning of the Tate orbit lemma, uh, but only, or rather, the uh, proof of the Tate orbit lemma, but just sort of uh, the, the abstract result, which may have uh, uses elsewhere, but sort of illustrative and the main point. So it's just, uh, it, well, it goes as follows. So I want to find the objects determined by the restriction to the spine. So I say F. SD delta n to c that preserves locally co-Cartesian edges is one generated if the following criterion is satisfied. So this probably will not make too much sense, uh, but I'll just state it without so much explanation. If I look at the string i to i plus k, including into um, i to i plus one, i plus k, then um, if I take this edge and label it e, that string inclusion is sent to an equivalence in c. So really this is, of course, in the fiber over i plus k. Uh, conversely, so maybe put my second definition, Conversely, F uh, map from SC1 delta N to C is extendable if uh, for all strings, I to I plus one, to I plus K uh, in SD delta N, the canonical map given by taking the monogamy from i to i plus k on f of i to the composition through this string uh, is an equivalence. So we have these two notions of one generated objects in SD delta n. The one is a reference to the, the post, the subpost at SD one delta n and uh, the subcategory of extendable objects. Uh, sorry, the, the, which, well, the, the notion of extendable objects indexed by SD1 delta. So uh, as I just said, I can look at the full subcategories on these objects.
and look at the restriction map as above. And the theorem is that this is an equivalence. Um, provided that, so under the assumption that um, the fibers of C are stable and the monogamy is given by left exact, well, in this case, exact functors. So as a corollary, if you think about what it means to be one generated and extendable, and you think about the Tate orbit lemma, you'll deduce an iterated fiber product decomposition of CPN spectra in the bounded below setting. So the Tate orbit lemma is all about how these bounded below conditions will force the, well, which will guarantee that these conditions I wrote down above um, are satisfied. So if I look at bounded below CPN spectra, this for instance will be equivalent to an iterated fiber product. So this is sent to the collection of XPH plus uh, where the right side is also bound below. So this gives a method for understanding CPN spectra very concretely. In particular, I don't have any um, somehow coherence data to grapple with when I'm specifying the data of a CPN spectrum, at least if I only care about bounded below CPN spectrum. And that bootstraps to proving uh, if you pass to infinity and do some tricks, then uh, you can d deduce the theorem I stated earlier uh, of Nicholson and Schultze, which simplifies the description of piece of atomic spectra. The proof in, in Nichols and Schultz is somewhat different. They don't do this sort of um, procedure where you prove the statement at finite level and then and go to infinity. So it seems a bit more complicated there, but this presentation of G spectra allows you to give a very simple proof along these lines. So any questions about that before I move on to the final part of my talk? Okay then. So I want to indicate the main ideas behind the proof of this reconstruction theorem. So the main idea is to do a sort of induction uh, based on the size of the post. So the reason I can successfully carry out this idea is for, uh, for the following reason. So the theory of recolumence Uh, gives an inductive method for checking that a functor f from c to d is an equivalence. So let me uh, explain it because, uh, well, it's really quite simple. If I suppose that um, I have two recolumments, well, CU, CZ on C and DU, DZ on D, well, how could I check that F is an equivalence? I would like to know, first of all, that F somehow respects these two recolumments. So let's say that F is a morphism of recolumments if it sends I upper star 
and equivalences and j upper star equivalences to the same. So it induces, therefore, functors fu and functors fz on the closed and open, excuse me, the closed and open parts. such that uh, these are compatible with the left adjoints. That's, of course, implicit in saying it preserves these uh, I upper star and J upper star equivalences. Moreover, F is a strict morphism of recallments if uh, F commutes of the gluing functor. So if I take CU, include the C and then map to CZ, and I take FU and FZ, well, this commutes with doing the same composition downstairs. So there's a natural transformation which I demand to be an equivalence for this to be a strict morphism of equivalence. The lemma is then that if F is a strict morphism of recallments and F sub u and F sub z are equivalences, then F itself is an equivalence. So this gives a very effective inductive method for checking that a given functor is an equivalence if I can somehow find appropriate recallments on either end. In our case, the game is to produce via sort of general or generic category theory, I should say lax category theory, a recallment on the right lax limit. of this geometric locus construction matching the uh, this family, the F recallments on SPG. And at this point, I think I uh, come to the uh, potentially only um, really novel thing we uh, did in this paper with respect to this body theory, uh, which is a bit more general in the sense that it works um, sort of unstably also in the sense that we'll see uh, a bit more general result than is necessary to, to actually prove this theorem. So the idea um, is that recallments on right lax limits of uh, locally co-Cartesian vibration C over uh, some post at P, or could be infinity category actually, correspond to uh, the, an existence theorem for uh, the right lax con extension of this, let's say P, uh, along a functor P to delta one, giving my sieve cos of decomposition of P. Moreover, I should emphasize that this is the point-wise notion. In particular, the right lax con extension in question is computed by an actual formula, which will give me a formula for the gluing functor on the recallment. So uh, just to say why this is, just know again that if P itself is delta one, then the right lax limit is a recallment basically. At least when uh, I have finite limits and preservation of finite limits everywhere in sight. So I think, um, do I have around uh, 10 minutes or should I wrap it up soon?
when we start? I, yeah, you could take take 10 minutes, understanding okay. that, that some people are expecting it to, to come to an end in about five. Sure. So let me uh, state the, the existence theorem. So, okay, so let me just, if you uh, are tuning out at this point, once I give a formula for the gluing functor, i.e. a pointwise formula for the right lax con extension along a functor from P to delta one, how does that help me prove the theorem? Well, I need to show I have a strict morphism or elements. In other words, I have to be able to control the gluing functor both on the side of the right lax limit and on the side of G spectra where I have the uh, recolement already given by the family. If I have a formula for that gluing functor, I can control the, the morphism uh, sufficiently to show that is a strict morphism of recolements and thereby perform my induction. So that's, that's the point of this. So let's just, however, work very generally. So let's take C to be um, some locally co-cartesian vibration and some sieve decomposition decomposition that is functor from P to delta one. And um, I want to look at P zero and P one and thus C zero and C one. And I want on this fun cocard over P SDP C to have um, appropriate localizations. So I'm going to scrunch a bit here, but the, I, you, know, you take the right lax limit over the sieve P0 and also the right lax limit over the sieve, uh, sorry, the co-sieve P1 as the open and closed parts of my recolement. In other words, the strata, once I push down to get um, push down along pi to get something over delta one. Everything here is easy, except, um, and really almost requires no assumptions, except for this. So this will require assumptions for existence. This J lower star functor. So you can define in two stages. So let's define SDP lower zero to be the full subcoset set on strings originating in the sieve P0. So this, in fact, actually is a co-sieve in SDP, as it turns out, respect to string inclusions. So step number one, you can sort of do a formal step, a locally co-cartesian push forward. to extend some map SDP zero to C zero to SDP lower zero. That's formal. Step number two is do a sort of relative right con extension from SDP lower zero to SDP for uh, appropriate uh, functors under appropriate hypotheses this exists if fibers of C over P admit finite limits and the uh, monodromy preserves finite limits. They're left exact. And, and this uh, completes the existence theorem. Uh, well, if I had time, I would give you the exact shape of the diagrams, but that's perhaps a bit too technical for a talk. But you have a precise control over the right, the relative right con extension given by a point by spark. That's the point. In particular, in the equivariant situation, you obtain a formula. Once you prove this, this reconstruction theorem, you obtain, therefore, a formula for, given the family F, computing the geometric fixed points of an F-complete spectrum, in particular for subgroups outside of the family, as certain limits indexed by sub, uh, sub posets of the subdivision poset, incorporating the generalized state monodromy. And this is, uh, this is uh, useful basically throughout equivariant stable homotopy theory. It gives, so this lax category theory gives very concrete formulas. It's somehow a 
tells you how uh, your your knowledge of lax category theory really um, aids in the, the study of equivariant stable homotopy theory. So that that's all I have for uh, for today.